I'm Egan Shira Taira, my sister's boss, and I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's Shia. Tonight's Shia, we have the cover to have with us once again, Rav Simple Bunim Koen Shlita, Rav Kal Tezer Shai Lakewood. I'd like to give a big Yashikayach to uh, Shlomi Berger, for sponsoring tonight's Shia, Rav Inshmas, Rav Aaron, Dave Baer, Rav Afram Alevi, Berger, Rav Shalom, Rav Inshmas, Rav Yaakov Shlema, Rav Yisrael Yaakov, Rav Shalom Begalizen. I'd like to give a big yeshikayach to Rav David Einhorn and his son, Rav Naftali Einhorn, for sponsoring tonight's Shia Lila Nishmas, Rav Naftali, Ben Rabbi Cheskel, of Hashem, the Yerusha, tonight, Chav of Ov. I'd like to give a big yeshikayach to Rav Baron Wolfson for sponsoring tonight's Shia Lila Nishmas, Ov, Rav Zev, Ben Rabbi Avram, of Hashem, the Yerusha, was today, Chav Hey Ov. Tonight's Shia is learned Lila Nishmas, Aisha, Shuva, Chaya, Fega, Rivka, Basabud, Ari, Label, Shalom. Wife of Reb Chaim Gross, one of the board members of Egan Shir Taira, Sirtai Tanai Chav of Ov, also known as the Nishma Saisha Esther, Basra Pinch, the Levi La Shalom, my grandmother, Sirtai Tanai Chav of Ov. Then Nishma Sam Tsuris, Besara Chaim, to have the great list of sponsoring a shear or to have an ad in the Egan Shir Taira Journal, a last minute ad in honor of the dinner this Wednesday, call Egan Shir Taira 718 or email ist at yeshivanet.com. My cover to call on. Of simple when I'm kind to give Dever Chizuk for Chadish Elo of kind. One is your kasha, I have a kasha on this week's parsha. There's a posseh in Chumash. Ba'ati Yisrael, mo Hashem alakech ha-shoel mi'imach. What is the Ebishter asking from you? Right? Getting a, a clear instruction from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ma Hashem shoel mi'imach. Ki im liyira as Hashem alakech ha to fear him. That's one. The lech is b'chol derachav to go in all his ways. That's to follow Hashem's ways. Now you have to know what Hashem's ways are. Anybody spend one minute yet on this pasuk to know what the lech is b'chol derachav means? I didn't. And then the havo, say to love him. The lava the Hashem alekacha and to serve him. It's another thing. So what do we have already? You have to fear Hashem. You have to go in all His ways. To love Him. And to serve Him. What about You don't have to. And then Lishma is Mitzvah Hashem. To keep His commandments. To keep His commandments. Now, is there anything more you could ask from for a person? Yes, everything. It says, Ki im I'm only asking, like, I'm giving you a bargain only. He's asking you so many things over this. Is there anything more you could ask? Do all my mitzvahs, that's enough already. Love me, fear me, and that's Ki im. Ki im is always a lush in that. That's it. It seems to be that there could be more. I don't have a teretz to discuss it. Maybe you want to say the teretz, you could say it. And the people maybe hear it somewhere. You hear the kasha? I asked them, many people this kasha, and they said it's uh, the, so most of them didn't think of it. And now, I can't answer you the kasha because I don't know the terrors. But how could you be Mekayim all these things? So the Gemara Dash, as everybody knows, the Mesechtas Menachas. It says, "Va'ata Yisrael mo Hashem lekecha shoyil miimach kim leyira al tikra mo don't read it mo elameya that you have to say a hundred brachas a day." So it seems to be that the Gemara is teaching us that the pasuk is telling the Gemara is teaching us that how could you achieve leyira as Hashem lekecha lechas b'chol derocha lahav oisay and to love him is by saying a hundred brachas a day, right? You say a hundred brachas a day, 
So you automatically you'll have you'll be able to fulfill this tall order what the Pusik tells us. Now how do you fulfill this Pusik all these conditions of loving Akhadish Baruch, fearing Akhadish Baruch by saying a hundred brachas. So I'll quote you what a sefer says. This sefer was in the times of the Riyah Kodesh. He writes, V'toiv l'odom l'chavim b'v'choysov. It's toiv. It's only toiv. L'chavim b'v'choysov. And he says, when you should start the counting. The counting starts at night. When do you count the hundred brachas from? Do you start from morning, from, let's say, tomorrow's Tuesday morning. You go from Tuesday morning to Wednesday morning, or you go from Monday night to Tuesday night. So, this Sefer holds that you start by night. Tonight, by Mayrev, you already start the counting. That's why Rabbi Yosef Sholem Aliyashiv, Zechrein Levrocha, held you shouldn't make early Shabbos. One of the reasons I think he said was because you're missing out all those brachas. On Shabbos, you're anyway missing out brachas because the Shemoneser gets sliced into half. So if you make early Shabbos, so those brachas are going to Friday. So you're missing four brachas of a Krishna, the seven brachas of Shemoneser, the Tili Shedayim, Kiddush, And if you bench before Tzesek so you're missing that. So you don't have the hundred brachas. So maybe that's a reason why you should make late Shabbos. And Elo, in my shul, we don't make early Shabbos already. We want to try make believe with doing tshuva. So this week Shabbos, we don't make early Shabbos already. It's only 7.20, Nish Gevelech. So this Sefer says as follows. V'toiv l'odem l'chav m'choiz l'im l'soyz m'tchil as halayla, count the beginning by night. Echad, echad, echad. The briskerov used to count on Shabbos. And when he hit the hundredth bracha, a smile was on his face because he reached his goal. On Yom Kippur, he didn't reach his goal from a hundred brachas. Every Shabbos, he took mafta, because after you have, you have a bunch of brachas. On Yom Kippur, he took Levi, because he wasn't gonna get, he wasn't gonna get to his hundred brachas anyway. So he figured, if he doesn't get it, let him get Levi and give mafta to somebody else. Abraham Kenevsky holds, no, that even if you can't get to a hundred, you should get as close as you can to a hundred on Yom Kippur. Now he says over here like this, the hundred brachas, he says, starts at night, and it should be brachas, but I ruy to be counted. Shivarach oisim bekavana ruuya. Have to have in mind, Hashem, you're the boss. The ilav hocha brachas psule sikre. They're puzzled. The ain't a ruyus leminyan. They're not befitted fitting to be in the count. How many times do I say shakal niya bidvarak and I don't think one second what I'm saying? Shakal niya bidvarak. Adra b'lechet yechoshev lechash hashalom. It can be considered for a sin. Uma toiv chalke uma noim gairolo im yichol I just had. I'm scared. I won't have a mind the right to kavona. Limnes oisim kulam bekavona. He says like this, Kivadai oise roishim lamaila, makes a roishim, makes a impact lamaila. The malachim get benched when you say a bracha with kavana. Kichol hoi lomais, he says, Eine miskaim ki mitzad ha pulis ha toivish nasis lamata. Tzadik yisod oilam. Why is a tzadik yisod the foundation of the world? Because when a tzadik says a bracha, he says it with kavana. So when you have a tzaddik, you have to love the tzaddik because you were living on the merit of the tzaddikim. Now, it comes out like this. If a person says a hundred brachas a day and he realizes that he has pirish amilis, the simple meaning, not asogis beyond our comprehension. So automatically he'll start fearing HaKadosh Baruch because he realizes that the Ebesh gives him everything. And he'll start loving HaKadosh Baruch Hu too, because look what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives me. He gives me so much. So if a person, so I'll give you a simple eight to what you should do. Buy yourself a little pad, not on your phone. Phone leave for other things. Buy yourself a little pad and write down, mark your brachas. Not Shemana that's too much. We're not going small steps. And you'll mark it. 
you'll see it'll make a tremendous rush. The days people do it, they tell me that a hundred brachas come out. I'm talking about the brachas hanen, I can't issue a milshim rest to mark yourself. But you say a shakal ni and then you have to mark yourself, so before you'll say it, you'll already think already what you're saying. Or you say, or you say, David, she gives you eyesight. You know what eyesight is? I don't have to explain you. And you mark yourself on 10 brachas a day, you'll see eventually you'll start saying brachas a Because I know by myself, the days I don't mark myself, I strike out. And even the days I do mark myself, I also strike out on plenty of brachas. Sometimes I get an 80%, sometimes I fail, 60 low. And when I went to school, below 65 was failing. And you just mechazik yourself. But if you don't keep a chajm, then it's not going to, unless you're from the tzaddik ador already, which, you know, you're not masih, that's from the ebishta. So that's the beginning, a good kabbal of el can make two, two uh, can accept upon herself big kabbalas, because they usually don't list, and we forget about them. But this Kabbalah is a simple Kabbalah. So take a pair. Get yourself a pair. It costs 39 cents. Go to Staples and buy yourself a pair. And start my, have it in your pocket, or a shirt pocket is. And you'll see, it'll make a tremendous roshim. And you'll become lahav Hashem. You start realizing what Hashem gives us. And layid it, you'll be afraid of Hashem. Now, being afraid of Hashem is very difficult in America because we're not afraid of nobody today. So how could you ask somebody to be afraid of Hashem, even though Hashem is doing things that are very strange and difficult, which we never had since, it's, it's twofold. We never had it so good since Churban since Beis HaMikdash in Gashmis. We never had, we never had so much Gashmis yet. We had so much Gashmis, nobody had so much. In Europe, there are few Gvirim. A big town had a few gvirim. The small towns had only poor people. They didn't have what to eat. Today, nobody goes hungry. The government's giving out boxes. There's, there's, there's enough. There's, you, you, if you're hungry, you go to a wedding, you can eat there. There's no, no shortage of food. And still in all, and the, the Vilna Goyen says, in Dor from Ikvesid the Meshich, which is now, we're in the time frame of Ikvesid the Meshich, when Mashiach is coming, nobody knows. The ones who know don't say, and the ones who say don't know. So when he's coming, now I took a poll, I took a poll, random people, and I asked them, when do you want Mashiach to come? After Bein Azman, after the summer, or during the summer? So it depends. Mm -hmm. The ones who were suffering from cancer, Achman, Lutzlan, or other sicknesses, said they want him right away. The ones who had planned trips, this one was going to Africa, this one was going to Switzerland. Now, you don't know when Mashiach's coming if he's going to let you go to Switzerland. I don't know. I, I never asked him yet. But you're going to have to have, you're going to for sure have to have permission if you want to go somewhere. Today you want to go, you pick yourself up, you book a ticket, and you go where you want. I think my humble opinion is, could be I'm 100% wrong, you don't have to listen to me, because I don't know, but I think it's going to be low enough. Do you want the, I asked the people, so, so most people told me, honest people, we'd rather have them after the summer. Because we bought the tickets already, and we have... Now, if you think about it deep into your mind, you'll see how true it is. Because we don't like change. Change, now I know exactly, nobody could tell me I could come late to Daven, I could do what I want, I could fight. Do what you want today, it's a free-for-all. So the Vilna Goyen says, in Dor Ikvasa the Mashiach is gonna be like this. It's going to be a superficial door. There's going to be learning like we never had yet. When I was growing up in the East Side, there was only one Yid, two few Yidin who knew Shas, who made see him as Shas, or Moshe Feinstein, Rabbi Yosef Leo Henkin, a few other people. Today, every person is finishing Shas. I mean, because art school helps you out with Masifta. Without art school, people wouldn't be finishing Shas so fast. It's a, uh, and the, and the, he says the, the Ruchnis is going to be superficial, Dr. Vilna Goyen. It's going to be a superficial, uh, it's going to be superficial. It's, it's not going to be real, genuine real. I want to tell you what genuine real means. You should know Hasoga the way it was. There was a yeshiva, Miri yeshiva, what landed up in Shanghai. You heard of that? Everybody knows. So there was a bacha there called Rebruvain Fine. He became later Rosh Hashiva in Torah Vedas. He was 16 years old when he came to Shanghai. 
I want to read you what he writes, what he himself wrote, and then you'll see what real Torah means. Now, I'm not complaining, but this is the way the, 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 the Matisse is going to be. And when the Torah is a chetzoni is a Torah, it's not coming from the in, from Pnim, it doesn't change the person. I know people, many people who are finishing Shas, but they're the same people. Torah is supposed to make you a different person. You're supposed to think different, act different, and live differently. The Chavis Halvavis writes in Shah Chesh ben Hanefesh, Peire Gimel, Chesh ben Chof Hei, Gashmius and Ruchnius is like fire in water. If you have a love for Gashmi, we're not saying you should eat like the Shteyman ate. Uh, uh, a little, I don't know what he ate a day. What he ate in a day, uh, uh, he ate nothing, Kamat. We're not on that Madrega. But food became an entity in itself. And there's no place of the meats. You advertise a big piece of meat, seven feet long and five inches wide. You eat, finish, you gotta eat. I'm enjoyed. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat meat. For sure you should eat meat. But it became an entity in itself. You know, I never ate in a restaurant in my life yet, and I'm pretty overweight. You don't have to eat in a restaurant. It's, it's, it's food, drinking became also bars. You go to a wedding, there's a bar. You're finishing shas and you have a bar. It's not real. It's not real. And you know why it's not real? Because I have to tell you a little secret. I'm going to get back to this and prove fine. Because without learning Musa, you can't become real. Who learns Musa today? Musa, real Musa. Like, you know, oh, you shuffle and you say, it means me. Not you learn the Musa and you say, it means the other guy. No, it means you. No, no, who learns Musa? You have a Chaburu in Musa? So I tried to bring it up. So my uncle was a Matzik Dayal Torah member, the last Matzik stuff we wrote. I said, Why? every Dafa Yoim she should have five minutes in the beginning of the year of Musa, five minutes in the middle of the year, five minutes at the end of the year. No Musa. Come to the next world. Person the Ebbish says, Did you learn Mashila Shisharim once? No. Never learned Mashila Shisharim. How could you climb the ladder of Shlemus without Mashila Shisharim? Can you explain me that? You don't want to learn Chavis Havavis, but at least Mashili Shisharim. Man, 65 years old, never learned Mashili Shisharim yet. And it's going to convince me. You don't have to convince me. You go out and convince Hashem. So listen to the Reuven Fine. You want to hear what the Reuven Fine writes? So, an average day in the summer, there was no air conditioning. It was 122 Fahrenheit. The oppressive heat drained people of their strength and sapped them of the energy. There were days in which the Bachan was so weak they had no strength to walk to the Bismadrish in the base Iron Sheep, but hobbled there instead. Due to the war, there was a war going on, the local authorities dictated that at certain times all windows had to be shuttered and closed. And because of that, the homes became ovens with the temperature reaching an unbearable 158 Fahrenheit, 158 Fahrenheit. The sweat poured forth from their bodies, drenching the Talmudim's clothing as they took the bath. The beads of sweat dripped down on, the, on the, their foreheads, causing their eyes to burn. The droplets also fell onto the pages of the Gemara and soaked them. So in order to prevent the sweat, from blurring the ink of the precious letter, Bachram would take towels and cover the next line. Because the, the water was often contaminated, they had to boil the, it before drinking, but due to the excessive heat, the water never cooled off, and it was difficult to drink the lukewarm water in order to keep hydrated. Okay, despite the difficult circumstance, circumstances, 158 Fahrenheit. The one thing they tried to do was to learn Torah. And incredibly, despite the in these, uh, these conditions, they stag. Rebruvain de, described the Havis HaTorah with passion and emotion. He spoke about the one Reb Chaim Salavechik to be found in Shaddai, that one Reb Chaim Alevi Al-Rambam. 
Every person had a chance to learn from it one night. My turn came on Friday night, wrote Reb Ruven. So instead of sleeping, I learned the famous Reb Chaim at a certain sugya. I used 28 towels to soak up the sweat. 28 towels to soak up the sweat. I learned that Friday night from 6 in the evening until the rays of the sun rose the next morning. I never experienced anything sweeter. Thus, hey, Skalantator. That was when, and they said, they asked, he writes, so how did we accomplish that? So he says, we had a mashgiach of Chaskel who poured us with Musa and Hashkofa and Amuna that he was the one the driving force behind the Bachem. Imagine you stay up Friday night and you have to soak, you have to use 28 towels to wipe yourself from the sweat. In Shanghai, and this is not 1600s, 1500s, this is in 1945, 46. No AC. What? No AC. No AC, it was 158 degrees. And that's, a, that's the way they learned Torah. He says he learned with Rav Nochem Partsovich. Second say they started at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes went to 2 a.m. besides Mayrev. Thus, thus when Torah comes from Panemius, then it's a different learning of Torah. Now we're living in a land where there's so much Gashmius, and there's no stop, there's no end. And if Gashmi is a Ruchni is a Astira, so what could we expect? So I'm happy that the Oilam is Shemesh Shabbos. I look up at the Oilam as great people. With so much Gashmi is. Everybody's in Etzisrol. The Chafetz Chaim never made it there. Chafetz Chaim wanted to go to Etzisrol. The Vilna Goyen wanted to go to Etzisrol. Did he make it? No. So a guy tells me, what do I need Mashiach for? I go to Etzisrol. I go to the Koisel. I have whatever I need. The carbonus I need. I don't like blood, he tells me. Is there a yearning for Mashiach to come? Because we want to steig in Avedis Hashem. But if you don't have a dogma in your mind of greater people, then you think you, you take it great. And you are great. But there's so much more to get. And that's what we're missing without, without the Beis Hamikdash, without the Nevi'im again. And people are satisfied. I, I did the, I'm finishing Shas. I did the Maksa seven times already. Did you ever decide once that you want to learn Toysvis and Horovan at Toysvis? You're capable. Everybody's capable. I tell the people in my shul, the Balabatim, pay a yeshiva man on Sunday to learn you with you for three hours be in. You're, you're capable. Do the daft too. Don't get me wrong. But that became the whole learning. That's not, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Now, we're holding soon by the Chodesh El. Sir Eilam asked me in Shul, please don't, don't start with El yet. Uh, you know, it's, uh, let us live. Loz Lebem. Now, in the olden times, when they benched the Chodesh, I just read that the Chofetz Chaim, when they said, Rosh Chodesh El, he trembled his whole body. You saw somebody tremble this week in Shul? No, nobody trembled. We're not going to tremble next week either. We're not going to tremble. Why? The world's coming. The world's coming. The, the, the world is, is not stable. It won't from, one, from one day to the next day, it's getting worse and worse. What things what were unimagined, which we couldn't imagine 50 years ago, is muta today. The, uh, mor the morality of the country is in the red. The president... So the Abish is saying, you're in America, and you think you're safe. I'm telling you, you're in big trouble. The Abish the wounds are slowly, but there's nobody talking about it because the people just want to be patted on the back the whole time, how great you are. You know how great you are? You don't even know how great you are. I'll tell you why you're great, because you have Salam al -Kim. This man right here has Salam al -Kim on his face. Who said that? The Chumash. The Chumash says, you can't argue with the Chumash. You want to argue with me? Give it Salam Alekim. What's on? Rabbi Miller told me he was Zaycha to see Salam Alekim by, by a human being. He worked on it his whole life. Salam Alekim, what's on? 
The country is going down to tubes. The liberals are taking over. So, so it is no right or wrong. There's nothing. There's nothing left. Or nothing. It's scary, but nobody's scared. It's scary. There's no yira. There's no yira from nobody. There's no yira. No yira. And then the Eibushter took away such tzaddikim recently. He took away Rebbe We forgot that we had the God Lador, the Ramshol Yisrael, Rebbe Chaim Kanievsky. You know, Rebbe Chaim Kanievsky was nifter. You know, was chusim were missing. And then was nifter big tzaddik this year. You forgot about him already. Rebbe Uri Zoha, you heard of him? Tzaddik Yisadoilom. Learned 17 hours a day at the end of his life. And he moved into a one room. So he said that from his living room, he could stick his hand into his bedroom. From his bedroom, he could stick his hand. And he had everything in the world. And he gave up everything. So missing that too. I want to tell you a story with Rabbi Rizor. You should know. There was a big godel by Yisrael called Rabbi Leib Steinemann. You heard of him. Right? He was left a few years ago. Rabbi Steinemann. Kodesh Vitor. He had a friend, he had, in his building, there was a few families. One of the fa- families was an Adam, was a son-in-law for Rabbi Yosef Sholem Eliashev. His name was Rabbi Yisrolson. His wife is a daughter from Sarah Toira Bahayira Rabbi Yashiv. Let me tell you something about Rabbi Yashiv. The reason why I tell stories about Sadiqim, first of all, it motivates, you, it, it motivates you that there's more you could do. And then it makes you feel good you belong to a nation that had such great people. Big Indian, the Chassam Sofer writes, Indian Godel Sapa Bishvachan Shal Sadikim. So I want to say Pshat. Why? Because it makes you feel good. You belong to a nation that has such great people. Anyway, Rabbi Yashiv's daughter, his son-in-law, lives in that building. And this younger man, Lipa, Rabbi Lipa Yisraelson, who comes a lot to America, and I became very good friends with him. Writes a story as follows. Rav Steinemann told him, he comes to America a lot. He, he, needs, he collects for certain moistness. Rav Steinemann told him, Lipala, if you find somebody in America who's happier than me, you get a million dollars cash. Mizuman, Mizuman. And Rav Steinemann had the money, because he kept, uh, people gave him money to give out to moistness. And he did keep a scuff. When you want to make sure that you mean it, stuck out his hand to this Lipala and said, one million dollars cash if you find somebody in America was happier than me. You're going to meet rich people. And he takes him around this little house. I don't know if you were ever there. I was never in his house, but people showed me pictures. He takes him to his refrigerator. He had one yogurt with a half of bread, nothing there. He says, so no, I have enough food, right? Then he takes him to his closet and shows him two kapatas. One's for weekdays, one's for shop. So I have two jackets, one for weekdays, one for shop. Then he shows him his kitchen, pots and pans hanging from a nail. Two pots, three dishes. He says, in Gashmis, I have everything. In Ruchnis, I'm trying, trying my best. But remember, Lipala, if you come to America, you find a Gavir, you get a million dollars. Cash. So he comes to America, he says, going to the airport, he tells me, and he's thinking the whole time, in Gashmis, I have everything. In Ruchnis, I'm trying my best. You should have been the forget. In Ruchnis, I'm, I have everything. In Gashmis, I don't have anything. He comes to America, he starts rich and rich people, and after each and every rich person, after a while, he's a very friendly person, they open up to him, oh, you have such a rough life, this son is off the derech, from Gevir to Gevir, he can't find any, he comes back to Yisrael, Rav Steinman asked him, no, Rav Lipala, Lipala, did you find anybody happier than me? No, nope. the deal's on, the next time too, Rav Steinman's on. Second time he comes to America, and he meets in the street, Rav Uri Zoa. And he tells Rabu Zohar, I made a deal with Rav Steinman. So Rabu Zohar says, you won. You're getting the million dollars. I'm happier than Rav Steinman. Because Rav Steinman always knew what Gemara was. He's a Chakodesh. He's holy from when he was born. I was on the other side of the fence. For me, a piece of Gemara is much more exciting than Rav Steinman. Because he always had excitement. How much commission do you want? He asks Rabu Zohar. He says, you can keep the million dollars. A minute later, he runs after him and says, nope. Every person needs somebody who, when he thinks of that person, it gives him Yiddish Shemaim. You have to have a dogma. You have to have a picture. This is the person I want to be like. This is the Yiddish Shemaim person who I want to emulate. If you don't have a living person who you want to emulate, so you take a stay the way you are. You take a good, but you don't stay. Anyway, he tells them, no, nope, you lost the money. You're not getting the million dollars. Why? Because my person who... 
when I see Rav Steyman sitting, you know, Rav Steyman sat on his high riser and he had a wooden bench holding his back. And he sat like that always. Only a person what's so intoxicated with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, full of Yiddish Shemaim, can sit like that. So he's happier than me and you lost your million dollars. So we lost Raburi Zoha, a man what showed us that this world is nothing and it's only Torah and Yiddish Shemaim. And then we lost a big tzaddik, a Lama Dvav tzaddik in Stanford. He was the Mashgiach in Stanford, Mokhal Banda. Then we lost, we, we lost suddenly the Telzer Rosh Hashiva at 63 years old. And the world is so shaky and people go about like nothing's happening. What's the pshat? Pshat is because we don't stop to think. Klosenberg Rebbe said, when World War II was starting, he went around from Kehila to Kehila, begging the people, do tshuva. The Ebesh is going to do something real bad. And everybody at the Moizgalach, they laughed at him. Klosenberg Rebbe, you don't know what you're talking about. And what happened at the end? You, don't, you know the end of what happened. The Ebesh destroyed the whole Europe. So we have to keep in mind now in Chodesh El, we're coming to Chodesh El, which the Chay Adam and the Svarim say, as such precious days, the Vilna Goyen writes that what you could accomplish in Chodesh El, you can't accomplish in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. The Vilna Goyen says, because in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, there's Rachamim with Din. But in Chodesh El, it's only Rachamim. And that's why the Yitzhahara is so powerful. And that's why in most years, vacation comes out in Chodesh El. Now, if you ask me my humble opinion, Chodesh El is not a time to vacation. Chodesh El is a time to, to try to motivate yourself. Now, I want to tell you two reasons why it's so important that Chodesh El should be a changed month. Besides the school of Rachamim, we're coming now to the Ebeshter for a new year. We want the Ebeshter give us another year. Who doesn't want to live? Everybody wants to live, right? So when you have, so if you, when you want to find favor in somebody's eyes, at least a few weeks before you're asking him for a big favor, you behave. You want to ask somebody for a big favor. You need $100,000. So you want to, so you, you have to be on good terms with him before you come for the loan. So you try to be polite to him. We're coming to the Ebeshter. And we're asking him, give me another year, Hashem. And not only me, I want my children, whoever, your family, friends. So at least one month beforehand, behave. Then there's a Pasuk as follows. There's a Pasuk in Pasha's Shoiftim. Not this week's Pasha, next week's Pasha. Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdoiv, Laman Tichya. It's a Pasuk, you should run after righteousness, Laman Tichya, in order you should live. So the Ramban says, Tzedek zu midas dinoy. The Ebishter made that the world has to run with midas hadin too. It's not a half kevelt. We think it's a half kevelt, but you don't get away with nothing. When you do something wrong, Hashem pays back. If you do something good, He pays back. No good deed goes without reward, and no not good deeds gets out, gets away, scot-free. Sometimes the Ebishter punishes in this world. You're lucky if you get punished in this world. If not, you get punished in the world of truth. There's no such thing. The Ebishter is not a vatr. And I know we're living in a century now where it's only positive love. Positive love. Now that was a churban because you can't rebuke anybody today. You can't give a smack, even a little smack, because they'll sue you and they'll put you in jail for that, right? When I was growing up, I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid, that's a hundred years ago, so the latest minion in the east side was a quarter tape. Today you go to show you Rabbi Landau Shul, you're 9, 10, 11. You didn't have that in the east side. The latest, ever thank Hashem, you have a minion factory, Mincha Meirev, one after another. The east side, you missed the quarter tape. The Bialvastaka Shul was the latest minion. Finished, not You daven be So I overslept. It was already quarter tape. My father was home from Shul. He took a freezing cold cup of water, spilled it on my face. 54 years later, I never came late to Daven because of that cup of water. So my father's sitting in the world of truth and he's benefiting that I come on time to Daven now. Now, if you do that today, don't do that today because your son will punch you in the face. But there was Yiddin. 
father spilled a cup of water. So we don't have Yidah no more. So what do we expect from the people? And you know, it's only positive talk. Positive, positive, positive. So I want to ask you something. Did you ever write a letter? You see a boy in shul learning Ben Azman. Did you ever take a pen and paper and write him a letter? Oh, I saw you learn and put in a $5 bill and encourage him. It was only positive talk. So why don't you ever say to the rabbi, hey, you spoke a good drasha finally. I'm listening to you for 42 years. <laughs> and you find this. Positive notes. You ever do that? If it says everybody's busy with positive, so be positive. So we lost the, we lost the whole thing. We, we dug our own hole. Don't say this, and don't say that, and don't say this, and don't say that, because you know what a kid told his mother recently? A mother told herself. Mother was rebuking a kid for something that he did. Didn't hit. Just rebuking. So the kid said, I'll, I'll, I'll become a fry. You do this again, I'll just throw, take off my yarmulke. That's what a kid could tell a mother. How old? The eight-year-old kid knew that. Where did he get it from? He reads the newspapers. So, so what's going to be Lamaisa? So listen to this Ramban. Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdarif, Laman Tichi. The Ramban says as follows. He quotes a medrash. If you do Tzedek, you start doing din on yourself, you'll live. That means if in Chodesh El, you start taking inventory and you look at your deeds and you start saying, I'm doing din on myself, I'm judging myself, a little bit on this, a little bit on this, a little bit on this, Laman Tichi, you'll live. So the Ramban is giving us an aid to how to live, a zgula. It's not, uh, you don't have to pay any money for it. And you, don't have to, uh, do, you don't have to travel no more for it. You don't have to travel. You just got to read the Ramban inside the Pasha Shoftim. Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdav, run after righteousness, Laman Tichya, in order you should live. So the Ramban is giving us an Eitzah, how to get another year. So the first Eitzah is find favor in Hashem's eyes. It's dumb. You want to ask Him for a favor? See, if you find favor in Hashem's eyes. The second answer is, do a little din. Start making a little bit, start making a little accounting, like we said before. If you start in your brachas, that's the hundred brachas. Breakfast, do breakfast tomorrow. I don't know what you're eating for breakfast tomorrow, whatever you're eating. You'll see, it makes a, a tremendous ration. Now, Also, another good advice is, the, uh, Rebbeinu Yoyna says, the Mishnah says, Eze chacham haloy mid mikal adam. What would you say? No, the Mishnah says as follows. Let me quote you. Rabbi Yain writes in Pidish Rabbis, Oymer Chachmei HaUmais. Well, Eze Chacham. He wants to know, he wants to give us a definition, what's a Chacham? So Rabbi Yain writes, from the Chachmei HaUmais, from the Goyesh HaUmais, from the nations of the non-Jews, he says, Ki ha-yedea kol ha-chachmais, im eina oyev es ha he doesn't love the Chachma, you have to love what you're doing. You have to l start learning how to love to daven. You love to daven. Imagine, you know how many people ran to Reb Chaim Kenevsky to just get a half a minute from him and get a bracha or buha? And they did it with just zest. Do you have a zest when you come to daven shachras in the morning? Ay. I have a schus to talk to the Ebishta as long as I want, but after a minute, they threw you out. If you're lucky, you got a minute. The Ebishta will let you stand for two hours, Shemin Esra, and he's listening. You have to love davening, but we got a problem. 
And this, I'm all, I offer them, I, I, I try to get this pushed through by the Matzah, the other but nobody listens to me. Does anybody teach Peter Shamilas? If I would know what I'm davening, I would be excited about davening. Rabbi Miller told me once that after he davens, he doesn't have to eat breakfast. He's intoxicated with such love feelings to HaKadosh Baruch He had a discussion with Hashem, and he, he only eats breakfast in the morning after davening, because that's his Seyda Hayoyim. But he doesn't have to eat, because when you get very excited, you don't have to eat. You'll see when you marry off a child, a lot of times you can't eat, because your adrenaline is so is overloaded. When he davened, it was overloaded. You have to love davening. Who loves davening? For most of us, it's, you know, we do it, we do it but you love, you're waiting. Ah, I'm, I'm, then, I can't wait for my roof tonight. I can't wait for my roof tonight. I can't. Can't shine shine out. You ever had that problem yet? So the Rebbein Yaini says, Eiz a chochem, who's a chochem? Somebody but loves chochmah. This he says from the chachm, when you start loving something, then it becomes part of your in, it becomes part of your insides. And that's why tzaddikim, they say the chazanish, put more amelis in davening than in learning. Now the chazanish was the biggest omel b'toyre. And when he, there's times, the people who testify, they didn't make a bracha because he was so upgeschwacht from his learning that he didn't have the kavana to say Hashem's name with the proper kavana and he had to drink because if not he would have chalished. So you have to, it's, so the Rabbeinu Yain is telling us, Eiz a chochem, who's a chochem? Somebody what loves chochma. He loves, he loves what he's doing. And how do you love when you're doing? When you study the subject. When you study what HaKadosh Baruch Hu does for you, like we started off in the beginning, you'll start loving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You'll take a love him. First of all, we have it so good in America. I'm not saying we don't have tzaras, but we have food. You have an air conditioner. There was such a hot summer. Imagine you wouldn't have air conditioning. You ever say Hashem once, thank you for the air conditioning? They even redid the shul, I see a little bit. I don't recognize it. They redid it. Everything is... You have a house. You have a bathroom in your house. You ever say thank you for your bathroom in your house? Today in the morning. Once today, you say it once? You say thank you, Hashem, for the bathroom in your house? No. Mm-hmm. no you know what it means? If there wouldn't be street lights in the street and you'd have to go to an outhouse after a full meal... Try it out. You can't even try it out because the street lights. There's so much to be grateful to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for, but you have to become a thinking person. And we don't can't think today because technology, I'm not going against smartphones, you could have 18 of them, I don't care what you have. But they don't let you think. When you're walking in the street, instead of talking to Hashem, you're talking on the phone. So the few minutes what you have is already used up already. You can't think while you're learning, then you're learning. And when, you, when you're eating, you're eating. So when do you think? When you walk. But if you're busy talking on the phone the whole time, so you don't have time to think. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu bench you all. You should have a successful El. The biggest Baruch Hu I could give you should have a successful El. You should steig by an El. Take it seriously. Learn Musa every day, five minutes. There's so many Svarim in English that you can learn today if you can't learn yourself. There's uh, Mashi Lishishorim in English. Art Scroll has it in English. Rabbi Miller has it in English. There's Archa Sadiqim in English. There's Choy V'shavavas. Make it your business. That in Choy Dishel, the Shari Tshuva is a little harder to learn by yourself. That's just easy to say. Make it your... Once a person... Rabbi Chaskal said, if a person doesn't take out a Musa Seifa and El, he's telling the Amish that I don't want to change. So just buy one. I give it cooler. Cooler means a leniency. Just buy it. Go to, don't open it. Just buy it and put it on your living room table. You have a musaf. That's the first move. You never got such a cooler yet, did you? Everybody says you got to learn it. I'm telling you, just buy it. Once you buy it already, then you might open it. At least five minutes a day, ten minutes a day. It changes your life. May I call this Baruch? I thought I was going to have a Meir before. I didn't know. They didn't tell me there wasn't a near Meir for before. And my, my drive is, uh, is waiting. So I, I'll have to end a, a few minutes early. May I call this Baruch? I'll bench you all. You should have a, a year with Abe Shishav of Kmonos and Kalal Yisrael. We need desperately Rachme Shemayim, Merubim. We don't have these G'doylum what we had 50 years ago, even 25 years ago, 30 years ago. When I was growing up, there was a Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, there was Sat Rebbe, whose yard side is tonight. There were so many great, great people. We have Chosheva Yidin, but we don't have these great, great people. 
you have the, you have the Rimna Tzerebbe. You know what the Rimna Tzerebbe? For hours he used to roll in ashes every night for the Churban Beis HaMikdash. We don't have this Zid no more. It's mamish like the Gemara says in the end of Sechot of Saita, Hachutz A principal told me he picked up a towel paper from the floor. So a kid, Tanya, are you the janitor here? He tells the principal, there's no, there's no limits today. The chutzpah, and it's by adults too. It's, it's the chutzpah. I mean, I'm a rabbi. I get plenty of comments from people. I would have never said that to my rabbi 50 years ago. Or if I would have, my father would have chopped my head off. Today, you don't like what he says? Man, do, don't. We have to be mechazek ourselves in ben odnum mechaveiroi. Fighting so much machloikis. I tell you, I was once standing with Ramesha Feinstein in the living room at 473 FDR Drive. It goes back 40-something years ago. He told me Mashiach was supposed to come. So I asked him what happened, why is he not coming? He says, because the Machlikas just broke out in Klai Yisrael. And we pushed them away. Machlikas, he says, is the worst thing. We have to try to keep away from Machlikas as much as you can. And the Ebesh Shaben Shavuol, where Ksiv Vachsim Mateva, Gugut Keben Shavu, Yemale Hashem, Mishalis to Bachel Toiva, you, your families, Bachel Nan Lilvim, Elachel, Laol Mead. Shame again, she retired much as possible. I've given bigger shakart or confidence to the Hizig Visayas, quite high shallow. Boys would like to remind uh, all the oil and invite all the men to Egan Shirtai's annual dinner this Wednesday, August 24th, at the Engage of Avenue K, 8 p.m. Due to space limitations, the dinner is for men only. But you can still hop around and put an ad in the journal tonight if you uh, send an email to ist at yeshivanet.com. To honor the Rabbanim, who share me with enjoy and have a chelik and a bottle's Torah, the Rabbim of Egan share Torah worldwide throughout the year. Or call call 718-851-8651, preferably email ist at yeshivanet.com. I'd like to give a big yeshikach to the sponsors of tonight's share, Rabbi Shlomi Berger, Lui Nishmas, Baron Dov Berber, and Fraim Alevi, Lui Shlomi Berger, Lui Nishmas, Rav Yaakov Shlomi, Ben Rabbi Shlomi Yaakov, Lui Shlomi, Lui Shlomi, Lui Shlomi, to Rab David and his son, Rabbi Naftali Einhorn, for the sponsoring Lili Nishmash, Rabbi Naftali, Mary Bicheskeld, of Ashom Zerzeit, and Eitchhof of Ov. But it could be a Shikhar to Rabbi Aaron Wolfson for sponsoring Lili Nishmash, Lili Nishmash, Ove, Rabbi Zev, Mary of Avrom, of Ashom Zerzeit, Tarechhof Hei Ov. Tonight she was learning Lili Nishmash, Isha, Shuva, Chaya, Feger, Ufka, Basar, Buda, Yaleib. Uh, Sholem, wife of Rabchaim Gross, one of the board members of Irgun Shuri Taira, as he heard say, was his tonight top of love. Also, the Lunish was my grandma, Alicia Estabas, or Pintas, Alevi, Alar Sholem, Zerta, tonight top of love. Tenish Bassem, Tsurus, but Sarah Chaim. Sarah Chaim, Tsurus, sponsoring the last year. Call 718 851 8651. Or sponsoring a share of Irgun Shuri Taira, we have Shurim throughout the year. 718 851 8651. Email ist to I should care to warn for coming from Hanania and a cash him. Rotaka is broke, Lazakas is his soil. Figure him on Termitish and a mile and a office and Manzika Yagul Tervi Yadi.